Welcome back to the Final Fantasy Tactics All Oracles Challenge being recorded here in March of 2022. Hope you are doing well wherever and whenever you are. Today we are doing a trilogy of battles here at Limberry Castle. That's right, it is a three-peat. These are three relatively fast battles all involving the Marquis Elmdor, or the Marquis Elmdor, as they say in some of the other uh, variations of this one. So we are at the gates of Limberry Castle. We're going to go inside Limberry Castle, and then we're going to head underneath Limberry Castle. All quick battles, because they all just require us to take out one unit. So there are some of those battles where you just kind of throw everything you've got at a character. Out at the gates here, all we need to do is get one of the thieves, or the uh, assassins out here, into critical... We're actually going to have to take her down. So the, the real goal here is just to draw one of them into our range of attacks and then just cast uh, four Drain Lifes on them. That's the that's the real quick version of this one. So we've got Celia and Lead right there. They are awesome characters. Love Celia and Lead. Wish we saw more of them, but they are just uh, so lethal that it uh, becomes actually pretty dangerous whenever you're facing off against them. So... There's also three of the Biblos type enemies up here as well. And it says defeat all enemies, but the, the secret objective is that you just really need to get one of these assassins to uh, try to take you, uh, to, to get critical, and then they'll go away. So she's casting Ultima. She's targeting on Ramza. This is one of the places you can have Ramza learn Ultima if he's a squire here in this one. And they are really going after Ramza on this one. So double casting Ultima on Ramza there. So he's going to move and try to target, but I do I do need to see if my drain life is going to actually hit. Uh, if they were charging and he could get up there for a stick attack, I think I would have Ramza just go up there for a stick attack. Especially if he can get within one tile of them where the Ultima would also hit them. That'd be pretty awesome. If he could get a stick attack and then also uh, get the Ultima to land on them, that would be pretty great. But uh, as it is here, he's got two Ultimas charged on him. He's just going to try to do a drain life. I guess I didn't look at the CT list to see if it would go off. Drain Life's a pretty fast spell, so I guess I, I presumed that it would go off before them. Didn't really matter. I didn't have any other options for, with Ramza there. So it either was going to go off or it wasn't against uh, the Assassins. So anyway, I'm moving the other characters up here. I think I might still have... I guess I don't know what accessories off the top of my head that I uh, use for this battle. I may have kept the mantles on, but that might not have been the, the best option because there's really not much you can do to dodge these guys. I don't know if I've, Ultima is dodgeable. Maybe it is off the top of my head. I don't know. But um, that would have been at least a choice, I guess, to keep the mantles on to try to dodge Ultima. I don't think you can dodge their stop bracelet like attacks. So there's a whole bunch of these Biblos things, and really, I just want them not to like get in the way. <laughs> I want them not to you know, block our way for anything. So this Biblos is going to cast a huge, or an Apanda, I guess. Apanda is the uh, the actual monster character. So he's charging, I, I can't remember if it's a big summon or if it's one of those big, like, nightmare kind of spells. I don't remember one of those abilities, and we won't see the name of it. So there it is right there on Ramza, 169, boom. And this one is also going to land on Ramza and it takes him out so there we go but he did get his one drain life to go off and here comes the uh, yeah whatever this thing is and they must have the mantles on now that I see that I do uh, I do remember they must have the mantles because they were able to dodge that so pretty clutch actually because if a couple of those would uh, would really not do us any favors if we took a few of those attacks boom that one's significantly higher damage and uh, you can see my oracles draining the uh, the MP out of that spell. Pretty awesome. Uh, sadly, they can't drain the HP back, but oh well. There's three of them. All right, so now the assassins are going to move again. And now she is jumping right up. That is Celia. And she's jumping up to target us with Ultima. So that is going to be the clutch part of this fight. This phase right here where both of them actually jump up to target us with their spells. That gives us an opportunity to target a bunch of the Drain Lifes on them. Even though we're weak, the Drain Life is a fast enough spell that we can get this in. So now I just need to see which one I can target, which one took the hit from Ramza before, and uh, just get every Life Drain targeted on that I can. And I just need a few of them to land. So you can see the Life Drain will go off even before the Apandas go, which is great. Okay, so that one's going to do 101. And again, it doesn't really matter 
about the Ultimas, I can bunch them up even though there's Ultimas targeted on them because we're either going to win or lose this battle in this round right here. This is going to be it. So she's going to move, and I've got one more to move into range. So I just need, I'd like three of these four Drained Lifes to land. And they all have, looks like, pretty decent compatibility. And this is just, uh, this is the setup, though. So I could see, like, oh, yeah, if I have to do this battle again, not a problem. I, I would set it up the same way because I got Ramses to land, and now I've got four more. I just need three to land. So there's one. Does indeed land. I, I, I don't think that getting her into uh, just three, just a quarter health, I don't think that's going to be enough. Yeah, because right there, so there's two. Um, I don't think that's quite enough to get her down enough to uh, end the fight. So I think I do indeed need to actually get her down. You could probably get her into like uh, an eighth of her hit points critical and have that end the fight. But uh, I don't think that a quarter is quite low enough. So if you want your sister back, be brave and enter, they say. We'll be waiting inside. Hurry up. Come on in. And that's exactly what we're doing. So stay right here. Stay right here. We're not going anywhere for this one. We're heading right on inside Limberry Castle. So in this fight, I the next fight coming up, I equipped the Enkai Armlets in the formation that you get before this. The Enkai Armlet cancels the Confusion status, a couple other uh, statuses as well. So that is because Elmdor is going to teleport right into our midst and use one of his draw out skills. In the first attempt at this fight, the draw out skill he used can uh, if inflicted confusion. I can't remember which one it was. Um, I've never really used summoner as much in this in this game, but he used the draw out on his on his way up as he came up here. One of our characters got confused, and just losing even that one action was too much for us to overcome. So I put on the Enkai armlets for this fight. I believe that Elmdor is still going to teleport right up into the middle of our characters. We did not need the 108 gems because he's not using Bloodsuck. He was just using, because we're all grouped up right there, he was just moving up to use the uh, use the draw out spell. And this fight really is too short for, really too short to worry about Elmdor messing around with that stuff. So he's got 558 hit points. So that is a huge hit point total right there. He's got teleport. He's got a whole bunch of that Genji uh, armor, and the Genji stuff gives him massive evasion. He also has the Hamido counter ability, which will like do a, it's like a pre-attack counter attack. So instead of your attack hitting, he will, uh, he'll attack you. So this is actually pretty interesting. So Rams is getting an ultimate charged on him. And when I look at the AT list, we'll see that Ultima is going to go off before Ramza gets his uh, life drain to go off. So that Ultima that right there is going to go off before Ramza gets his. It must just be like by one or two ticks or ten ticks or whatever the, the number of CT ticks. And I was actually rather alarmed by that because Ramza already took one hit and that Ultima is actually going to take Ramza out. So I'm thinking here about what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Uh, and there's not really a lot Ramza could do except uh, he's going to move and try to attack Elmdor from the back. And you can see how good Elmdor is at dodging stuff that uh, even from the back he has only, a, I think it's a 30% chance of landing. Yeah. So that attack lands and Ramza, like I said, he could not get a drain life off anyway before the Ultima. So Ramza, if they targeted Ramza the individual, that means that they are going to uh, cast Ultima on, on him and it's going to hit Elmdor. Now, the other Ultima is also targeted right next to Elmdor. I probably should have left that character there. I think I do end up moving her just to spread her out, um, which is probably technically a, a misplay here on this. I think this is the second attempt at this fight. The first one had the character get confused. So now it's really just targeting Drain Lights because the one targeting Ramza is going to hit Ramza and Elmdor. And Ramza is safely spread away from all of our characters. I'm kind of spreading everybody out here. And I believe it's uh, this last one, yeah, right here. So I should have left this one right next to Elmdor. I should have just had her ca cast Drain Life here and left her standing there so that ult when Ultima went off, it was it would hit him as well. But I think I do move her here. Oh, no, I do. I move her, and I move her um, actually right next to Elmdor. So it looks like that would be a, that would be enough. Anyway, I did, I did play that better than I thought. So that Ultima does take out Ramza, but it also does 200 damage to Elmdor. So he's taken a stick hit, and he's taken the Ultima. So actually, the Ultimas, uh, or the Drain Lifes, I only have to land a couple of them here. 
instead of having to land, uh, you know, like three more of them. Because the ultimate did more than one drain life's worth of damage. Uh, these ones have the 60% compatibility, so they are not quite as accurate. So uh, that one's going to miss. That one's going to miss. And here comes my next one, although Ultima would be going off next. Um, that, that could do it for us. Ramza's already down. And this uh, Drain Life does indeed land, and that ends this battle. So uh, that was the quick one right there with Elmdor. You really have to throw everything you've got at him, and we actually used the Ultima to our advantage right there. And... You know, as I said before, Ultima probably was going to go off next and finish the job unless he dodged that because I don't know if Ultima is dodgeable by all his stuff. But uh, Elmdor says, come underground here to get your sister. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Yes, stay here. Here comes battle number three of our trilogy here at Limberry Castle. All three of these battles took about the amount of time that one uh, regular battle with a uh, defeat all enemies would take. Actually, much less than some of the longer ones, like the Galgrand Execution Site, if you've seen that on this channel. Um, but so, yes, this next one is with Zalara, I think it's the Angel of Doom, the, uh, the Zodiac Demon that Elmdor becomes. And this Zodiac Demon got a couple of, of evade things, and for this battle, I put on the Germanus Boots. Uh, the Germanus Boots give you plus one to move and plus one to jump. Because I remember this particular battle, there's there's the um, the bridge right there with the water. You're kind of a, I don't know what this is down here in the catacombs, but it's also a very long level. You can see it's kind of a long, skinny level. So I wanted my characters to kind of have maximum offensive power with this thing. I know that Melia Duel comes in here as a guest, and she normally fights those skeletons back there, and, and she becomes an easy target for them. The zombie knights up here are not going to be too worrisome for me. That's why I went for the boots. To let me just uh, get as many characters as I could within range of casting Drain Life. Because again, we just have to hit four Drain Lifes on Zalera there. So Melia Duel's coming in. And the uh, skeletons are back there on top of the those cool uh, headstones. Or like in the crypt of this, uh, of this castle here. So Zellera has uh, a nightmare ability. I think it is. I think it is just nightmare, the same as uh, Quecklin's, because it, it's a sleep and death sentence. Pretty accurate here as well. You can see. So we got sleep, sleep, death sentence, death sentence. Ugh. So uh, two characters sleeping, which means we're gonna have to inflict four drain lifes now with uh, three casters who are up. We're gonna rely probably on those skeletons actually to wake up those characters in the back there. So when they get their turns. They're going to need to move up and become um, and leave the sleeping characters as the closest targets for those skeletons. So that if one of them decides to come up and attack, the skeleton will engage with the sleepers. They'll have full HP, so it doesn't really matter that they're going to be attacking them. I don't know why Melee Duel just goes way back there. And this uh, skeleton here decides not to do its like throw soul thing. It could have gotten a pot shot off one of our characters. Maybe it could have gotten one off on the uh, sleeper, but I don't know if it needs a line of sight for that. But here's Ramza just looking. And you can see the Germanist boots making a big difference right here. So Ramza can, like, jump down into the water and jump back up out of the water uh, pretty easily here with that, thanks to those boots. So I'm glad that I equipped those for this fight. So 239 is the amount of the drain life. That is a quarter of its health. So you can see that it's got uh, about uh, close to or a little over 900 hit points, I guess. Yeah, a little over 900. So there's two of them that are targeted. Amy is going to... Yeah, so she can jump up past the sleeper. So that's why I want to leave the sleeping uh, the sleeping oracles at our rear flank so that the skeletons can come wake them up. And yeah, Death Sentence is ticking down. But Death Sentence in these kinds of battles with, uh, with the Zodiac Demons, Death Sentence is pretty... I don't know. It's pretty inconsequential even for casual parties, because these battles are usually over one way or the other pretty quickly. You know, Velius is casting Cyclops and stuff, so if you ever get a death sentence in the Velius battle, that would not do very much. So that one's missing. That's un that's unfortunate. <laughs> but remember, they they're going to have the same compatibility with this demon as they did with Elmdor. So if they had 61% against Elmdor, they're also going to have the lower chance to land against uh, the demon. So these are the the undead zombie knights. They, I think I look at their stuff. I think they have no equipment. 
So this one uses the, the throw soul uh, thing here against Amelia Duel. Amelia Duel is going to dodge it with the shield. Cool. Way to go, Amelia Duel. And that other one is going to go after her with the, uh, the the knife hand, I think it's called. Knife hand ability. Love that name. And here is Zalara again. And this is why I have those boots on. Because, like, Zalara can kind of retreat because it has this ranged attack. So it reapplied sleep and death sentence. Uh, but then it looks like our characters could... could actually defend against that so the mantle may have stopped that from going i'm still glad i went with the boots but the mantle may have stopped that one from going in melia duel can't use her mighty sword ability against these skeletons because they don't have equipment you have to have an equipment uh, that matches the mighty sword ability in order to use it so uh, if you don't have a sword you can't use the sword breaking mighty sword you can't use shell bust stab without armor or ice wolf bite or whatever without uh, an accessory so Ramza here, again, thanks to those boots, he can move into, into range of the, of the demon. So even if the demon is kind of retreating, we can stay within four tiles to target our life drains. And we're just kind of doing it, you know, every time, doing as much as we can. She can do it without moving, so she's going to do it, and then she's going to wait. I believe she waits here just to try to pick up a little bonus in her, in her CT so that when that drain life goes off, she has a... a fewer fewer enemy turns before she gets to roll again and we're just doing the same thing this round as we did last round now this one's gonna come up and it's actually gonna do a, a sword skill with a fist on ramza it's gonna break i think it breaks his headgear i checked later we still have gold hairpins on here in this fight just to prevent silence from hitting us so that drain life misses so ramza has better compatibility i think that was 81 percent or 83 percent to land so that one misses, unfortunately. This one's gonna land. And so we're, we're really just rinsing and repeating here to see how long we can last in this fight, to see how many rounds we can go with this. And uh, there it is though, actually. That was all four of them landed, 298, boom, boom, boom. There is the monster gone. So in one video, we've taken care of three battles and uh, Marquis Elmdor and Zalara are on their way out of here. So if you have liked this series of videos, coming up to the conclusion here pretty soon, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, drop me a comment, or hit me up on Twitter, where I'm also active underscore A-T-E. We will see you next time as we head on further along into Chapter 4.